Hi, and welcome to episode one of Way of the Samurai. The... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Take two. Hi, and welcome to episode one of Way of the Samurai, the video podcast to help online business owners like you master your marketing. In today's episode, we'll be talking with our copywriting team about the importance of copywriting, sales, and how to use the science of influence to boost your online profits. We'll also cover some of the latest feature updates for the Noble Samurai uh, line of products in our news desk segment, and we'll answer your most pressing questions about SEO and online marketing in our Ask the Samurai Q&A segment. We're really excited about this show. We've got a ton of ideas for the show, but we really would love your feedback about what you liked, what you didn't like, and any great ideas about content or questions about online marketing that you'd like to see answered. Just shoot us, shoot us an email at support at noblesamurai.com with your feedback. We're also broadcasting the show live on the web, and if you're watching live, please. <laughs> Let me just turn this audio off. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and as we said, we are also broadcasting this show live on the web, so if you're watching live, please feel free to ask questions in our live chat room, which you you'll should, should see below this video. And as we're still getting to the top of all this technology required, to put a show like this together, and believe me, there's a lot, please forgive us if there are any technical difficulties or hiccups along the way. We hope you love this show, so let's get started. <laughs> and this is where we go to slides. You liked, what you didn't like, and any great ideas about content or questions about online marketing that you'd like to see answered. Just do this, shoot us an email at support. You've got the podcast playing another window. Okay, yep, yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. just play. Oh, we are professionals here. <laughs> totally professionals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're good? All right. <laughs> okay, All right. so welcome to the very... Um, the uh, yeah the very very first episode of the conversion factor and uh, this is uh, this segment is all about talking about sales and marketing and how to improve and boost the uh, yeah the levels of your sales uh, on your website so. Um, Today we're actually going to talk a little bit about the importance of copywriting, why it's, you know, why it's important to your website, uh, why it's probably probably the number one um, undervalued skill um, out there in online marketing, and we're going to be covering off uh, some of the, the what we call the factors of influence. So um, let, let's kick it off. So, um, copywriting. Why is it the number one skill? <laughs> it's, it's really because it infiltrates absolutely everything you do. So um, pretty much uh, if you're trying to communicate something to, to your list, to like let, let's say you want them to do something, you want uh, uh, your customers to buy something, you want them to read an email, you want, them to, um, you want them to leave a comment on your website, basically anything that you want your, uh, your customers to do, um, you need Need to affect it. You need to effectively communicate to them, and that's basically what we're talking about. We're talking about the written form of that communication. Um, so copywriting really, it, it, it's it's in everything you do. It's important when somebody comes to your website and you want them to you want them to read it, you want them to watch a video, you want them to do something. Marketing and copywriting is is so deeply ingrained in absolutely all of that. So it's really important that if you're trying to achieve something in your business, you're trying to get your customers to do something, you're trying to help them, that uh, you really need to understand how marketing works and how copywriting works. And um, there are basically, um, so, so th th there's a lot around this, This uh, it's a very, very deep subject and it, um, it goes, uh, it takes quite a while to to, um, uh, to become familiar with and to be able to do it well, but it can actually be broken down into six main categories, which are commonly referred to as the six factors of influence. Um, so, do you want to give we'll, us a brief? Well, we'll cover that off in a bit of a second. Um, we just so in in, term, in terms of copywriting, um, there's there's just a misconception. I think that copywriting is only um, uh, only useful for say, you know, um, 
sales pages, for example. Whereas I think, as you kind of mentioned, copywriting is important for every single step in running a business, um, in, in every single step in online marketing, uh, and particularly for traffic. So a lot of traffic generation boils down to writing ads uh, for in AdWords or Facebook or ads, ads and, ad, and other sites. There's copywriting involved in you know, opt-in pages. There's even an SEO. SEO is kind of considered to be, um, oh, what I don't need to know copywriting. I'm I'm, I'm a professional SEO person, um, but SEO is more and more becoming content marketing. I think there's also another important point to make around copywriting is that there's most people's perception of copywriting is that you know like um, for example a journalist would write copy uh, for, for a newspaper, but it's got a very very different purpose to what we're trying. To to achieve in online marketing, so um, you know, like uh, copywriters for um, for magazines, for example, um, a lot of like the articles and stuff, you would consider that to be copy, but it's not um, the, the the sort of copy that we're talking about is for the purpose of um, uh, encouraging action, so people to actually do things. It's not just copy and words to sort of entertain people so much. It's actually trying to get them to take action um, and move forward. Um, to, to achieve an outcome. So, you know, it's to buy a product and then get the result from that product. It's to read an email and then go and learn something from a blog post. It's about really copywriting from the perspective of trying to encourage people and communicate to people to actually take action. That's right. And um, with, uh, particularly even say for SEO, now SEO has, it's traditionally been about sort of beating Google's algorithm and, and, but now it's really transforming into so SEO is more more about marketing. It's about content marketing. It's about putting out really great content. And people think, well, what 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 does content have to do with, with uh, you know, with with sales and marketing? Well, it, you know, if your content is not compelling, then people won't read it. And if there isn't a call to action in your content, then people won't do anything. Exactly right. So even even here with our training videos, we we kind of look at. Um, our, our training and the content that we create almost like as a mini sales letter. We need to work out um, how do we get people's interest and attention, how do we um, connect them with the problem that this particular content is trying to solve um, and uh, you know, and then what do we want people to do after they've watched that content? Yeah, I mean, like SEO is moving much more towards marketing, and beneath marketing, the sort of the 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 very broad spectrum of marketing is copywriting. Copywriting is really the the work that you do in the trenches to do effective marketing. And as SEO is moving towards that, copywriting really is the master skill, um, which is which you really need to have. And you don't have to be a master at it to be effective at it, um, but you, it is something that is really, really important to actually being successful online. Um, you really, really can't, it's very, very difficult to be successful without at least understanding the skill, whether or not you're, you're, you're a master at it. And the exciting thing is, is that um, there's actually a lot of science which is proving a lot of this stuff now. Um, if you if you look at a lot of the master copywriters who have kind of um, you know all the big companies hire to, to do their you know multi million dollar ads and all that sort of stuff. You know the big guys like um, you know the, the late Gary Halbert, um, uh, John Carlton, Dan Kennedy. These sort of master guys have kind of known this stuff for a long time. They've known what's worked, um, and they have kind of categorized it into these into these categories. But um, what actually in the in the last sort of 10 to 20 years there's been a lot of scientific studies which have proven what actually goes on in the brain when these things uh, when these um the, these master copywriters actually implement these strategies yeah and um so just taking a look at the slide over here like ma marketing is you know it's considered to be this yeah it's kind of fluffy thing that you need to be the you know a sleazy salesman or you need to be <clears throat> an outgoing personality and mm -hmm. you know the kind of guy that you see yeah selling you know used cars and and that and that, that puts a lot of people off from from doing marketing and and as you said like there's a lot of studies coming out now a lot of um a study of the brain in terms in, in, in neuroscience um that actually showing what is you know, how we as human beings are wired, how we respond, and and this stuff actually backs up 100% the stuff that trusted copywriters have known for you know for centuries, I guess. Um, and yeah, and what's really exciting about that is that you know a person who is not an outgoing personality, who's who might be more left brain rather than mm. right brain, a bit maybe less creative, um, can actually do this sales and marketing stuff and be really good at it. Mm. And I mean that that that's one of the things that we're most excited about, um, sort of as we're moving into 
um, like uh, the internet's really just starting to get its legs and it's really starting to grow now, the the possibilities of this stuff um, is, is really endless. And there's so many different ways that we're we're learning that we can actually implement this stuff. Um, the book, The um, Psychology of, of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini, um, is a really, really great book for actually just getting an understanding of how these these particular factors influence us, how, how we respond to, to certain factors of influence. Um, so we'll talk about those in, in just a moment. Um, yeah, so... Um, so this is guy, yeah. It's this guy Robert Cialdini. So he's this, he's a he's a scientist. He um, d conducted a lot of different studies around what makes people do things. Mm. You know, how do we um, influence people? How do we bring people into to compliance with our kind of message? And I guess that's actually probably before we even go into that, we should kind of really uh, say that you know there's this, there's a um, a perception that sales and marketing is about manipulation. You know, it's about forcing your will upon somebody else, and you know that's actually not true. I think a better mindset to have around uh, marketing is that it's actually effective communication, and in the way that if you're going to communicate to a computer, you would use a programming language. That is how you connect, you know, to a computer. When you're talking to a human being, you need to say, well, wh what is a human being? How is a human being wired? And what is the most effective way to communicate with them? And a human being is made up of of, of both logical decision making capabilities as well as emotional decision-making capabilities and it's really important when when you're trying to communicate someone with someone that you don't just go for the logical side of things because you're just not going to get through like you know there are different personalities of people who have you know maybe they lean more towards logical um, sort of decision-making but everybody in the world has has an emo a very very strong emotional side to them and if you completely neglect that that um, that side of their personality you'll completely miss the mark yeah, and, and I think it's, yeah, <laughs> and even left brain personality people, like we've got a lot of software engineers here in the office, um, you know, they, they go, oh, this marketing stuff doesn't work and stuff, and, uh, you know, they, they tend to be, be predisposed and biased towards making decisions, you know, logically and objective, ob objectively, but then, you know, if you see, like, in the background, you'll see these little statues and things um, of different sort of comic ca characters, and, and uh, you know, these things cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for some of them, and so, and yes, yeah, so, in, in one area of your life can be very logical about making that purchases, um, in another, you, you know, there's obviously an emotional connection that allows people to, you know, spend a lot of money on things that they're passionate about. Yeah, and, and, and the important part, to, to, or the important point to make is that um, not everybody is going to be your market. So when you, when, when you copyright, when you try and communicate, you're trying to communicate with um, the, the, the people who have the problem or the desires um, uh, that, that your product or service will solve. So you're not going to get everybody, but in every single market, when you have, or when, when you're trying to connect with the people who have that desire or that interest or that pain, um, that, that that communication is absolutely core, and it's an emotional and a logical um, uh, equation, basically. Um, and it's really, really important that when um, yeah, that when you are trying to make that connection. The emotional side of things is so critical because everybody, even if they are, even if they are very, very logical, have that emotional side. You just can't escape it. We are human emotional beings. Yes, as much as I try not to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this this child, uh, he went out and he worked out you know, what are these factors um, that you can use to influence people, and these are really, really key. I think you know every Every single piece of copy that we write, and I know a lot of master copywriters and marketers out there, they use the same list every single time that you're trying to influence somebody, whether it's through an email or a web page or an opt-in form, going through these six um, factors of influence that uh, Robert Cialdini discovered and applying it, saying, how can I introduce each of these factors to um, the copy that I'm writing, um, is, is just a really awesome way to bump up your copy. If something's missing, it's usually you're not applying, it. it's missing something of these factors or you can dial up these factors even more and so I think really think that it's, it's, a, it's a really excellent book uh, we, but we'll just cover those six factors really briefly um, the plan is sort of over the next uh, few shows that we will go into each of these factors in a bit more detail and make it um, much more practical and, uh, that's exactly right because the, the, the book um, psychology of persuasion by Cialdini is it's a very very sort of um, uh, 
how would you how would you say it's, it's a very conceptual book. It, it, there's a lot of studies that he did to sort of uncover these particular um, factors and kind of give some shape and understanding around them, but. He, he wrote the book more from the perception of how to be aware of them as opposed to how to take advantage of them. So it's a very, very important book to read from that perspective just to sort of understand what they are. But in, in subsequent episodes, we're going to talk a lot more about the nuts and bolts of how to take advantage of each one, where to use them, how to use them, and how that relates specifically in internet marketing. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go through them. So yep. um, fact number one is authority. Yep. <laughs> What's authority all about? <laughs> authority is basically um, that when uh, all of these factors are, are more framed in the from the perspective of compliance, so actually getting somebody to do something, and how these and then these factors all contribute to making that a much more likely event to, to kind of stack the cards in your favour. Um, more importantly, and authority talks about um, basically if you if, if you are somebody in a position. Of of authority like a doctor or a surgeon or somebody like that and you ask your patient to do something you are much more as a patient you are much more likely to comply and to do what the doctor says because they have the authority they've got the education they've got um, you know the doctorate they've got all of these things which says this person is somebody I should listen to because they know what they're talking about so and they know more than I do so um, so I should comply and I should do I should do what they say I should take this pill I should you know do this exercise I should do whatever it is they say because they are someone in a position of authority yeah and I think um, I've got a really good example of this actually I've so got a really good friend and she is one of the top tennis coaches in the world she's coached a lot of the absolute you know the top Grand Slam winners, um, and she's she she offers coaching services. She's got information products and books. She just re recently wrote a book, and she probably is the best person in the world, and the most qualified and most the the, the greatest expert in this particular field. Yeah, and she's what, but she's one of the most humble people in the world. So for her to kind of talk about her success, um, you know, that that she's had, and talk about testimonials and really kind of, you know, list out all her achievements, that's, you know, for a lot of people, you know, um, that comes across as kind of, oh, I can't say that. I feel like they're boasting or bragging or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I kind of had to, I kind of tried, tried to explain to her how, how important it is. And the, it's, you got to have to look at it from the perspective of helping other people. So who is the most, who is the ideal person that my product or service is going to be able to help? Now, if I don't effectively communicate to them when they visit my site, they may leave and not get the benefit of my product and service. And in her case, like literally, she can take a very, very talented, um, like you know, teenager or something, and turn them into a world superstar, mm. like literally. And so, the, and that just means, you know, that the, the impact financially, impact to their to their family and their entire future is just enormous. It's incredible. But if she doesn't uh, communicate effectively, that person could visit the website and not understand how much this how much um, you know, she, she's able to help help them yeah, I, I, and, and walk away and and you know like literally that's the difference between changing a life and not changing a life yeah I mean a, a good way to a good way to um, sort of characterize that is this is that if, if, if let's say somebody you know like a teenager who wants to who wants to play tennis for example and they're very very good but they just don't know how to take their level to take their game to the next level if they were just browsing the internet looking for looking for a way to help this and they came across the, 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 this friend of yours and they just saw a blank page with a photo of her they would know absolutely nothing now she has the skills and the expertise and the power to be able to change that person's life and, and fulfill their dreams but if she doesn't actually communicate the value that she has the authority that she has um, the skills, the experience, all of this, all of these things, that person will just waltz by like she's another person, like she, like she has nothing to add. But she's got all this stuff that she's just not actually getting across. Or even worse, they might go to another website with someone who is nowhere near as good, um, who happens to be really good at marketing, and um, you know, sign up with the wrong coach. Exactly, and just not get the results and waste a lot of time and you know and, and money mm -hmm. just you know just going down the toilet. So yeah. So that, that, that's a brief that's a brief summary of what authority is and, and why it's important. Okay. What's the next one? The next one is reciprocity. Yep. Yeah. So reciprocity is all about um, the fact that you know when you do something for somebody or give some 
give um, give a gift or something to somebody that there, there's a feeling of indebtedness there is um, you know it's like uh, I do I do you a favor that they, they feel indebted to repay that and the the, 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 the interesting uh, with this sorry the interesting point with this one is that the 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 power of reciprocity can endure a very very long time. Yes. For example, if so, if someone um, uh, who you, you know you're friends with, all of a sudden you know, let's say you have this agreement where you don't buy each other birthday presents, and then all of a sudden they turn up one one year with a birthday present for you. What's going to happen is you're going to feel that sense of indebtedness right through to their birthday, which could be a year away, could be another year away. You're still going to feel that sense of oh, they bought me a birthday present last year. So I really need to buy them one this year. Yes, it can last for, and that, I mean that's just an example, but it can last a lot longer than that. So reciprocity is a very, very powerful one. Um, another example is if you're is if you're um, at a, at to dinner and somebody buys you a drink, you feel this instant sense of need and, and indebtedness to repay that drink. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, the way we're wired, we're social animals, you know, and evolution, you know, the, our background is, you know, we want to it. it we want to. We're stronger together in a community, you know, uh, together in groups. So, the the fact that we look out for each other and we repay yep. each other just means just a better functioning society. Exactly. Yep. What's the next one? Next one. Social proof. Oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> social proof is a good one. Um, social proof is one of probably the out of the six. There are there are two which are really 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 powerful and very, very, very tangible in terms of you can implement them and get an, an almost an instant boost and, and a result from it. And social proof basically is that if you have a number of people basically assert an opinion or an action, um, so, you know, an, an, an example could be, you know, a bunch of kids on a play, on a, on a play, on some play equipment. If there is a whole bunch of them um, playing on this particular piece of equipment, all of a sudden, because they've asserted this, this um, affection for, for the play equipment, then other people standing around are more likely to want to play on that equipment because these other people have already said, oh, I like this thing and I want to, I want to play on it and it's cool and it's fun. Um, so then all of a sudden other people want to. Absolutely, yeah. And this is, I mean, like a tangible way that this is, um, this is, uh, you know, we see this all the time is when uh, like on Facebook when somebody likes something or they or they write a comment on something, you see four thousand comments. There's a lot of people who have asserted a certain, um, you know, uh, opinion towards whatever it is that they're they're commenting on, um, and this encourages others to do the same. Yeah, and it's a and. Big and it's a very, very important filter for people. I said, if you've got 10 different products and one product has a lot of testimonials, exactly has a lot right. of likes, has a lot of comments, yep. then it, it, it's a filter. It's easy to just go, well, I'll pick that, that that one because it's the safest one, yep. you know, or hey, it, it, you know, just it just looks really, really great. Like all these other people have, you know, they've said it really great. So let's say you know, it's got really good you know, reviews on exactly Amazon right. or something. And as a customer coming coming to your communication or what, basically all, all us humans, we're, we're always trying to conserve energy so much. And what we're trying to do as we go through life is we're basically subconsciously using these six factors as a filter for us to figure out whether or not something is worth our time because you know our time and our energy are, are our most precious precious resource so if we um, we're, we're analyzing whether we should buy something whether we should listen to somebody whether we should do something we're using this as a subconscious filter to assert whether or not we should do it so when you're you know when you're writing emails when you're doing your sales pages these are the sort of things that you're trying to inject everywhere so that someone coming along goes this is worth my time yeah because these are literally the way that we make decisions we look for these things even if we're not you know um, aware or not exactly yeah which, which really makes me angry because you know so many sales pages or you know like product pages say on Amazon they've only got two or three kind of bullet points you know they don't have all this kind of information I want all this information it's exactly gonna, it's going to help me make a better decision so yeah I'm, exactly like I, recently I was at a, I was at an auto store and I was um, looking at a certain additive um, to put in my to put in my engine and I, I had like 15 to choose from and I ended up just going with the one that had the information on the bottle now they probably all did it they yeah. probably all had the all actually satisfied the need that I had but I actually went with the one that just said on the bottle it does this and it's just it's just that information is critical absolutely yeah. Okay. So, what's the next influence factor? Okay, we have liking. Liking. Yeah. So, liking is 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 
really just the fact that um, we are much more likely to do something for someone if we like them, right? If someone's being a jerk to us or something, then obviously we're not going to do something uh, for them. But all these, all, but if we like the person, if we have a relationship with them, if we can see that we've got rapport with somebody, then we're more likely to <clears throat> be influenced by them. Uh, they ran some, uh, Robert Cialdini ran some experiments where they, you know, got uh, beautiful blonde women to go up to to men and you know ask them to do something like buy raffle tickets or something and and you know a lot more of the complied um because there was there was some you know instant rapport and liking in that mm -hmm. in that situation so um it, it is very very important in marketing and sometimes um people make the mistake of trying to come across uh, as having too much authority and i'm the super expert and i'm the big guru um and that's you know that that's kind of good to a degree but if you lose rapport Hmm. And you know, uh, and and you distance yourself from from someone. Then yep. they're very very unlikely. To, they go well. That's all good for you. You're really smart. You've got all these PhDs and all this sort of stuff. I'm just a, an average guy. Hmm. I'm not going to be able to do that. So, um, or you might even come across as really arrogant in in doing that. Um, so you need to, you need to create connection um, you know, with your reader as well. Hmm. Uh, an example I like to think of it, about is this is if, if you if your if your mother asks you to do something, you're much more likely to to comply than if somebody off the street walk you know, walking down the sidewalk asks you to do exactly the same thing. Because you don't know who they are, you know, you don't know you know what their motives are, whereas somebody who you like and you know and you trust and you have a lot lot of rapport with, i.e. your mother, you're you're much more likely to go, Yeah, oh, of course I'll do that. No worries. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, what's the next one? Number five is commitment and consistency. All right. <laughs> <laughs> commitment and consistency is basically um, that uh, w w when you make an assertion about something, you know, like uh, I like, I like uh, pancakes, for example, then you are, as soon as you have made that assertion, you're much more likely to be consistent with it later on. If you, especially if you say that in front of a lot of people, if you were around all your friends, you said, I love pancakes. And then the next time somebody's, you know, two, two, two years down the track, they say, oh, do you like pancakes? You'd be much more likely to say yes, because you already have asserted that you do. If you, um, if you all of a sudden said, no, I don't like them anymore, they'd be like, well, I don't understand. You said you did, now you don't, what's changed? Um, and, and, and we all, we almost feel like we're being fake if we change our minds. Absolutely. Um, it's a very, it's very, very powerful. Um, Cialdini did a lot of experiments around this. Um, uh, what was the, what was it? Was the Hare, the Hare Krishna one? No, oh, community consistency. Community. No, no, that was um, the Korean. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the yeah. Korean Do you want to tell that story? Yeah, so um, it's really, really fascinating. So during the Korean War, there was a bunch of American um, POWs that were in a concentration camp, and the the people that ran the, the Koreans who ran the concentration camp were trying to influence these um, soldiers to um, embrace the ideals of communism. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, one way was to you know to, to beat them into doing that, but they knew that that d didn't work or didn't work if they tried doing it. Uh, but what they did was actually they used this commitment consistency principle. So what they did was they would take each um, uh, each soldier individually. They would take them into a room and they would get them to um, write in their own handwriting something like uh, not that communism is the best in the world, but you know that I well, maybe you know communism uh, it's not so bad. You know mm -hmm. there's some aspects of it which are really good and positive, something like that, and get them to sign their name, right? And then the um, the, the people running the concentration camp would take these letters that were signed and post them up where everyone could kind of see. And it was, an interesting thing happened, uh, that the people that wrote those letters would actually begin to take on those beliefs and start standing up and defending what they had written because there's just this incredible pressure for us to be consistent with what we say, what, we say, what we've written. And gradually, you know, it's kind of the chink in the armor. Then they get them to commit to bigger and bigger sort of, um, uh, you know, commitments towards you know, taking on uh, communism. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very powerful. Um, it doesn't, you know, we'll talk, you know, in future episodes about how to specifically use this in uh, online marketing. Um, it's still a very, very useful and very powerful mm -hmm. technique. It has, it has it only has a, a few applications though. It's one that's very powerful in the right circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really have like necessarily universal application, no. but when you can use it, definitely it's very, yep. very powerful and very subtle. Yes. Yep. Um, and the final one is probably our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely our favorite. Which is uh, called scarcity. Yep. 
Um, scarcity uh, is, is, as I mentioned, with social proof. Um, scarcity is the other one, which is is really, really the most powerful, the most universal, um, and it's the most effective at actually getting the response. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that really, really tips people over the edge, that point of making a decision, because it basically brings that decision forward. Um, probably uh, an example where we've all um, we've all experienced scarcity is we've all we've all bought something on eBay before, and eBay auctions um, are, are, are perfectly engineered um, with 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 deep deep scarcity, because usually there's only one item up for sale, and there's a there's a deadline before the auction expires. So house auctions are another another example of this, um, where there's only one item. And and lots of people want it, so it's a scarce resource. Um, and basically, what scarcity is is it's when there is a limitation, when there is more people who want something than there are things available, it becomes more valuable. And when something's more valuable, people are much more likely to to, to try and take advantage of it. So, basically, scarcity there in the two types of scarcity are limited quantity of stuff, um, and there are um, uh, basically a limited amount of time until something it becomes no longer available. So, I mean, if, if you think about it in the in the example of water, if there's a water shortage, then all of a sudden that water becomes so much more valuable and people are going to start trying to get their own, you know, supply of this water so that they, you know, they can survive. So if there's an abundance of water, then it's not really that valuable. Mm. Um, I mean, like, it's why gold and diamonds and, and precious metals are, are so valuable because they are in short supply. Yeah, so scarcity is just one of those, it's just, yeah, it's very universal, it's very powerful, and it makes sense why, because, you know, um, as I said, like... Uh, it really taps into the survival instinct. Yeah, like if there's, if you're, you know, if you're in a cave and there's only a little bit of food there, then you want to be really motivated to go and get that food before it disappears. It's literally life or death. Hmm. Um, today, it's more, I mean, it's... We don't, we don't really have, I mean, uh, like in, in the world that we live in, we, we don't really have that in terms of food and... and, and and all, and all those sorts of um, those sorts of things. Yeah, but it's more like we but we want something. You know, exactly it's, right. It's a desire. So for my case, like a new iPhone gets released, and you know I'm queuing for like six hours yep. in, a, in a line, and there's hundreds of people there. So it's good. I know there's only a certain number of quantity in Australia and in this particular store. It, it's I've, I've got to make sure I get there before you know um, four o'clock in the morning to queue up so I can get yep. my device. And yes, I'm that pathetic. Um, <laughs> but, but but we also but, see we also see it with, with sales. Like, you know, a department store, you know, has a Christmas sale or a Boxing Day sale or a Black Friday sale or whatever it is. There's this, there's this big sale and, you know, if, if I don't go and if I don't go and get what I want now, then I'm going to have to pay double the price for it because it's, you know, it's this big discount. That's so right. you're much more motivated to take action because this discount is expiring. That's right. So there are consequences of not taking action. That's really the key thing yep. when scarcity. But we'll cover much more of that yep. in, in the future episodes. And, and yes, we, we love scarcity so much. We actually created a product called Scarcity Samurai, yep. which helps you to visualize scarcity, you know, um, on your website. So. Yep. So I'll talk about uh, a lot more about that in, in future episodes. Yep. Okay, so that kind of probably winds up this first uh, conversion factor episode. We've got a couple of action points. We really, you know, believe we, you know, it's, there's one thing to listen to information, take information. It's another thing to go and uh, start applying this yep. in your business. So we've got a couple of action points today. Um, the first is that you should pick up um, a copy of the uh, psycho. It's actually psychology of. It's called Influence: Psychology of Persuasion yep, by so Robert Cialdini. By Robert Cialdini. Um, that's, that's the important thing. So just take it, read it. It's very, very easy reads. It's all told in stories. It's fascinating. Yep. Um, goes into a lot more detail than what we've got. What we've done here. Um, still, probably one of my number one marketing books of all time. Yep. And I've read a lot of marketing books. Yep. Um, the second uh, action point is now that you've kind of seen these six uh, factors of influence, just open your eyes. Take a look at uh, advertising or ads on tele, tele, you know, television or the next time you're in a sales situation and see how many of these um, factors uh, can you pick that are being used and even think about um, you know, which ones are missing. What others, how could you potentially add some of these other factors of influence to improve that piece of marketing, improve that, that, uh, that, that, uh, yeah, I mean, process. like, uh, very, very, uh, like probably the, the two easiest ways to actually do that is if you're on Facebook and you see uh, a lot of your friends liking things to, to just try and sort of take a step outside of yourself and think about how that affects you. You, you see, um, you know, 
you know, like maybe a picture comes up in your feed and all of your friends have liked it or lots of people have liked it, um, you know, maybe just have a think about, am I more likely, you know, do I feel like I want to click on this now and see what it's all about, what all the fuss is about? Um, and another one is scarcity, is actually looking, you know, um, looking at uh, being more aware of product sales and um, and department store sales and auctions and and, and, so and any time you buy something, why ask yourself why did you buy? Yeah, exactly. What right. were the factors that made you buy? That's I love, you know, every time I buy something, it's like why? Why did I buy? And, like, and, and probably the best way to actually um, kind of realize that is. I after you've bought something and you may be not sure why you bought it afterwards or you maybe you have a sense of regret or something like that and start to think about, okay, well, what was actually at play when I bought this? You know, was, was, was there a lot of emotion and excitement? Or was, um, you know, like, why, why did I actually buy this? Yeah. That would be a very important one. Okay. And the uh, final call to action is we're actually going to, uh, we would like to start a new segment on the show, which is uh, doing marketing reviews. So if you would be very interested in getting our opinion about how to improve your sales process, your marketing process, even your, your SEO on your website, uh, submit your website for a marketing review. So how do they do that, Ben? Um, well, what they need to do is they need to send us, um, uh, basically send us an email and we want uh, that, that email to support at uh, noblesamurai.com. Yep. Um, which is just a, 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 a catch-all um, uh, email address. And what we want is we want your website address so we can actually look at your website. Um, we want uh, your name um, and where you're from just so we can put a bit of a name to a, uh, a face to a name and know who we're talking about and who we're helping. Um, a photo would be really nice just so we can we can really get that sort of sense of um, connection with you. Um, we also want um, we also want to know what the main problem is or the main thing that you're trying to achieve on your website because this is obviously you know we, we're trying trying to engineer this around actually helping you. So um, if, if you send us your website, we'd like to know um, what it is you're actually trying to achieve. Are you trying to get sales? Are you trying to get um, people to opt in? Are you trying to get people to comment? Are you trying to get people to just download something? Are you trying to, you know, what are you actually trying to achieve with this website um, so that we can actually help you, that we can basically do a review and actually, you know, give you some action points that you can implement to, to make that a success. Yeah. Okay. So please submit your website. Um, yeah. We'd really love to give it, give you some feedback and apply our experience in marketing yep. to you know, help, help your business uh, thrive. All right, on to our next segment. Okay. So, G'day guys, it's Jeff here from the Noble Samurai support team. Uh, we like to call this next segment News Desk. Uh, today we want to give you a bit of a roundup of uh, some of the changes we've made to our products. Uh, we have Market Samurai, we have Article Samurai, Domain Samurai, and the newest kid on the block, Scarcity Samurai. So we've made some really good changes of recent time and we'll kick off with Market Samurai. I'll pass over to my illustrious colleague, Alex here. Alex, what are some of the changes that we've made recently with Market Samurai? Uh, first of all, hi, I'm Alex. You may recognize me from the points that I wanted through shot earlier on. Um, <laughs> professional, professional. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be talking about Market Samurai. Uh, most, of, uh, most of you as our customers will know about Market Samurai. Um, it's been our major, our flagship product for Four or five years, five now. years, five yeah. years nearly. Um, so yeah, we uh, market samurai is a one that we continue to continue to update. We try and add new features, try and improve the usability, um, uh, and we make a make a bunch of changes. Uh, the module, the first module I'm going to talk about is the rank tracker module. Now, last year um, we made a, a big, big move with rank tracker. So we changed it from a uh, a module that pretty much required user action. Um, every Every time it was used, people had to uh, uh, open up Market Samurai, go into the Rank Tracker module, and click Update to get their updates. Um, and the change we made was we made it an automated system. So effectively, every single week, it does an update. If you come in and see it, you see it. If not, then you don't actually have to take a take an action. Um, so with the new Rank Tracker module, one of the changes we've recently made um, is it's a usability usability upgrade. So when you go into a Rank Tracker, if you've got you know a dozen keywords added. Um, and you want to see updates uh, updates for it, you'd have to click on each keyword individually, open them up, and you know, you'd see all the pages. Um, the change we've made is, uh, we've pretty much made it so you can select multiple keywords at once, expand the results, collapse the results. It's a small feature, but it does save, uh, save a lot of time. And if you look at saving a few minutes every day, um, over the course of a week, you're actually saving you know, a workable amount of time. Um, 
so uh, so that's that's rank track. Uh, next up, we've got the SEO competition module. Now, um, for SEO competition, we've added this is a this is a new feature. This is kind of a cool one. Um, we found that a lot of users had a desire to actually show SEO competition results to uh, to colleagues, to friends, to say an SEO consultant. But previously, the only way they could do that was to get their consultant to have a copy of Market Samurai mm -hmm. and send a project file to them. Yeah, or take a screenshot and email a screenshot, which is again it's a pain in the butt. Uh, it, it's a pain in the butt, and it also doesn't look, you know, doesn't yeah, it's not very professional. Yeah. Um, so we've added a new feature, which is the ability to just share your uh, share your results pretty quickly and easily. Um, we're actually going to do a, a quick demo of it. I think uh, Jeff's uh, Jeff's prepared back there to do a demo. I have, and I don't think I let our uh, director behind the scenes know that we're actually going to do this. So Dan, <laughs> it's, you can it's hear, okay. It's okay. <laughs> we need to uh, we need to get onto my laptop and to, uh, get Marcus Samurai up and running. Everyone cross their fingers. There we go. There we are. Excellent. He's a great man. Okay, so the button down the bottom right hand corner here, you see it says share results. If you click on that, you get an option to share it publicly for anyone with a link who can see my results. Obscured, anyone with the link can see my results, but keywords and links are obscured. Or private, where a password is needed to view the results. So for this example, we'll just click public, share now. And it gives me a unique link that's been copied to the clipboard. Now, if I go into my browser, click go to page, even easier. Ta-da, there we go. Beautiful set of results that you can share with your clients and uh, Yes, a lot, a lot, lot more professional than just sending a screenshot. So that's uh, that's one of the fantastic features that we've just released very recently, in the last few weeks, I believe. Uh, all right. What's up next? So uh, next up, we uh, we have uh, well the keyword research module. Now the keyword research module is the major module for pretty much all our um, all our products. So it's used in Article Samurai, Domain Samurai, Market Samurai. Um, it's a free module, so it's available for all users, um, and we intend to you know, tend to keep it keep it that way. Um, so with keyword research, we have recently tried to make uh, we, we've tried to. Uh, improve the way the workflow um, happens. So at the moment, there's a lot of different people who use Market Samurai and a lot of different affiliates who uh, who promote Market Samurai, and they use it in different ways. So we've got some people who like to use exact match data. We've got some people who use phrase match. Some people use broad match, etc. Um, but Market Samurai at the moment is pretty much engineered toward our workflow, and we're trying to trying to really make it as flexible a tool as possible. If you want to just view view um, exact match data, then you really should be able to. Um, so the change we're making to Market Samurai is we're pretty much breaking down the keyword research module so that all the different match types, all the different types of data that you can gather um, can be gathered separately. So you can set Market Samurai up so that it works the way that you want it to. It's a pretty big change and we're trying to make it uh, as sort of backward compatible so anyone who has an existing workflow doesn't find it interrupted. Um, and it's one that's going to require a, a fair bit of internal testing. Um, but yeah, we're going to we're going to break it down, make it so that uh, you you can set things up the way you like it. Save your save uh, a default set of filters, or even a you can have multiple workflows um, and be able to use uh, swap between those workflows depending on what stage of the investigation you're in, depending on what it is you're actually trying to achieve. Yeah, and it's going to be a whole lot faster as a result. It's going to be a lot <coughs> faster. Significant speeding. Yeah, because we can. Um, yeah, we've we improved it so it's a lot faster. It doesn't need to get as much data. It just gets the data it needs to get for the particular workflow that uh, you're trying, trying to do. So you should see a very significant speed up as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to that one. I think a lot of our users will be as well. Um, I think that's everything for Market Samurai this week, but uh, we'll bring bring more news to you each week as it, uh, as it comes up. Absolutely. Next cap off the rank is the uh, Scarcity Samurai. Now, this is our baby. It's only been out for... A few months, I believe. Two months, I think. Two mm. months, yeah. Just coming up on two months. And a lot of changes have been made since we actually first released it. Um, uh, speed increases. Uh, we've done quite a few things to just make it a better experience for users. Uh, who'd like to have a chat about that? Huge. Um, no, you can go. <laughs> no, it's okay. I got it. I got it. It's all cool. Um, so when we went live with uh, with Scarcity Samurai, uh, for anyone who's not really familiar with Scarcity Samurai, it's a tool for WordPress blogs. You uh, a plugin for WordPress blogs. Um, you hook it into uh, into WordPress, and it allows you to make very quick and easy scarcity based um, uh, funnels. Uh, it can work both uh, with or it can work both with like a single page, allowing you to add banners for, for scarcity so they count down when you uh, when you load a page. Um, but the real key to it 
is that it allows you to uh, to work in an autoresponder. So I come to a page and uh, I sign up to uh, to an email sequence, and I can be sent. Um, Links in that email uh, in that email sequence that allow me access to pages over a certain uh, certain amount of time, and those are like time limited uh, time limited pages. Um, and so the key to this is the ability to get Scarcity Samurai to work with autoresponders. Uh, when we went live originally, we worked with three autoresponders. We uh, had the ability to use uh, Sendpepper, uh, Aweber, and Infusionsoft. Um, Three wasn't enough though, so uh, we, we've doubled that. We've doubled that. We've now pushed out uh, MailChimp, GetResponse, and uh, Office, Office Autopilot. Autopilot. So we're now up to six. Um, as people suggest more, we're looking into them, trying to work out which ones are which ones are the best ones, which ones are the, um, the ones that uh, the internet marketing community really, really want. And uh, you know, the more people who ask for them, the, the faster we get them implemented. Yeah. So if you don't have an autoresponder that's supported, just email us, and if there's enough people requesting it, we'll add it into the product. Um, if you want to know what email address to use, we'll have a, a slide at the end of the end of the show just to let you know, you know, the best contact details for us. Um, next up, we've got the administration view. This one's it's a small, it's a usability thing, um, but we we think it's really going to going to help a lot. Uh, we have a fair few users who contact us saying, um, you know, I'm trying to set up a scarcity funnel, but when I try and view my pages, it doesn't look the way I expect it. And more commonly, or more often than not, the reason for that is that they're actually logged in logged in as an admin. So the pages that they're viewing, they're able to see it because they're an admin when the offer may have expired or something like that. Yeah. So we've just added a nice little visual cue, just letting you know that you're in administration mode. Um, gives you a heads up that you should be maybe looking at a, an incognito window if you're using Chrome. Um, so, you know, it's a little usability thing, but we think it'll help. Uh, next up, oh, I've just clicked the button twice. Uh, next up, we've got the banner selector. There we are. Um, so the banner selector is a really, really cool little feature. So the, uh, we have the ability to add banners to pages. You can add them in the header and the footer. Um, but when it comes time to, to make a banner, uh, you, you have a banner that's probably going to be called My Banner or something like that. Maybe My Banner 1, My Banner 2. And unless you have a really good memory, you're actually not going to know what My Banner 1 and My Banner 2 are. Um, and that leads you then down the path of trying to give all your banners names. Red banner with big text. Red <laughs> banner telling me that it's 50% off, etc. cetera, um, which really isn't that ideal. So we've actually made a new banner selector um, that pretty much renders the banner as, uh, you know, like it renders a small version of the banner in a drop-down box. So you can call your banners My Banner 1 and My Banner 2, and when you use the drop-down box, it actually gives you a miniature version of the banner. So you can really tell what it is you're going to be doing to the yeah, page. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a really nice little feature. Um, oh, I say, little feature, quite a big undertaking. <laughs> and a lot of these features do come from requests from users as well. So. Absolutely. In fact, the uh, the next feature, uh, support for PHP 5.2. Um, PHP 5.2 is something of a dinosaur, but it is pretty much the default PHP version for a lot of different hosting providers. Yeah, so PHP is the language that runs um, WordPress. Yes, yes. Um, so 5.3 is currently the, the sort of major version. Um, I think it's their current major version number. Yep. Um, but 5.2 is really, really heavily used. We've had a huge number of con um, customers contact us saying, my site uses um, PHP 5.2. More often than not, there's actually uh, hosting providers do give you the option of upgrading to 5.3. Um, but that's an extra step. It's one that people don't want to take. A lot of people who are on shared providing, um, shared hosting, don't actually have that option yeah. because a lot of sites would be affected by the upgrade. If you can upgrade to 5.3, you sh still should, though. Absolutely. Um, 5.3 is a lot faster, and WordPress will drop support for 5.2 relatively soon. Yep. So you should you know, definitely upgrade it, and 5.2 sucks. So. <laughs> Just, uh, well, but for, anyone, for anyone, and there are quite a lot of people out there um, who who are still running 5.2 for whatever reason. We've now added support for 5.2, so Scarcity Samurai, fully functional. It, it drops the speed fractionally, but you know, you shouldn't actually, it shouldn't be a noticeable thing. Yep. Um, but I mean, that, that really should push you toward getting 5.3, because it is the better way to go. Um, so yeah, uh, Scarcity Samurai is now fully functional with uh, PHP 5.2. What about some of the future things, Alex? What are we? Uh, what's in line now for Scarcity Samurai in the coming weeks? Oh that is a terrible joke. Um, well, coming up in line for Scarcity Samurai, um, are what we like to call inline banners. So at the moment, um, I just got it actually. Oh, <laughs> it was an accident. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, <laughs> um, sure. So 
Inline banners. Well, currently, the way banners work in Scarcity Samurai is that you have the option to put the banner in either the header or the footer, and they're floating banners. So as you scroll down, the banner actually follows the page um, either up or down, so it'll stay in the same place. Um, and that you know that can obscure a little bit of content depending on where it is, but it also means that the scarcity offer is there in your customer's face. They know they know what's happening. Um, but one thing we've been asked for is banners that can be inserted into content itself. Um, so that would be a static banner that you can put um, actually into the into the HTML content of the WordPress page. Yeah. Um, so as you move through the page, that banner is only only visible you know in concert with pieces of content. Yeah. So. Um, uh, it actually adds a lot more flexibility. So one of the one of the things we're currently working on, in fact, the uh, the prototype was finished this morning, uh, is inline banners, and I think Jeff's going to give Absolutely. us a little bit of a yeah. little bit of a look. Yeah. Can I put them into blog posts as well. Uh, you can put them into blog posts. Awesome. You can put them into uh, I think it's any any sort of uh, page on WordPress. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, so here's a bit of a demo for you all to, to have a look at. Uh, as you can see here, we have some content just up here. We scroll a bit further down, we have more content here, and here we have a banner ticking down nicely, and if we don't buy now, then we may miss out. So this is the concept of, of what we're aiming for. Uh, there'll be different styles and and uh, and whatnot. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to edit your own banner and do whatever you want with it, and I believe you'll be able to have multiple banners in the one page as well, so. Absolutely. That would be good, multiple, uh, multiple inline banners to uh, keep people uh, buying your stuff, which is very important. Um, so just another couple of things about inline banners. We're also going to have support for um, horizontal and vertical banners. So you can chuck a banner like on the sidebar of your uh, of your page. Yeah, the sidebar banners would be awesome to have it on every single page. Yep, That'd be fantastic. Um, so that's uh, that's inline banners. It's a it's a work in progress, but uh, the the internal testing begins now. Yeah, and keep shooting through your ideas too for uh, yeah for scarcity samurai. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, in fact, the next uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, the wizards within Scarcity Samurai. So, um, Scarcity Samurai, it's got a lot of customizable stuff in it, but the the real key to the ease of use for Scarcity Samurai is the wizards. We've got four wizards at the moment that take you through two types of um, evergreen campaign and two types of fixed date campaign, um, and they allow you to um, set up either a multi or a single page uh, single page campaign. But we're looking to expand Expand, expand that. So what a wizard is in Scarcity Samurai is a very quick, I think it's generally a five-step process um, that just tells you this is what you need to do. Here are the pages you need to create, here are the scarcity elements you can add to each page, and pretty much it takes you from not having a uh, not having a sales funnel at all to having a functional scarcity-based sales funnel just step by step. Um, and given how easy it is to set up, um, we're actually looking to add more wizards with uh, different types of campaigns in mind. So rather than having to take an existing wizard and uh, effectively twist it to work the way you're after it, you'll just have a wizard that will do exactly what it is you're, you're looking to do. Um, That's awesome. In fact, I was at a recent WordPress conference on the weekend. A bunch of people came up and said, hey, I you know, really love Scarcity Samurai particularly the wizards, they actually really like the wizards because yep. it's so easy. In fact, some of the developers were going to copy that idea for their product as well. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a winner. Um, so given given um, that we're you know in the process of putting together more wizards, if you have ideas for wizards, if you have ideas for types of sales funnel that we could incorporate into a wizard, shoot through uh, shoot through an email um, and we'll look to what we can implement. Awesome. Um, and I think that covers uh, that covers Scarcity Samurai for this week. I mean, next week will be uh, another story. Um, so here, just a quick uh, quick idea of the the different autoresponders that we've got uh, got supported. Um, if you if you don't use any of these autoresponders, as we mentioned, let us know what you do use. We'll make, we'll do our best to uh, to get everything everything supported. Absolutely. Now, huge. I have a question for you, my friend. Uh -huh. Article Samurai. One of the most common questions we get asked in support is, "What is Article Samurai, and does it work?" So, will you be able to let the guys out there know? Is it still working? Is it still a viable SEO tool? Yeah. So, Article Samurai is our content syndication tool. So, allows you to write an article and then distribute that onto like tens of thousands of different sites out there, um, primarily for the the purpose of getting back backlinks to your site. Um, and it's been a really, really effective strategy um, in the past. Uh, last, was it last year? It was definitely last year. Last, year before last, wasn't it? Yeah, Could have been last year. I don't know. No, I think it was April last year or something. Anyway, time's a terrible thing. Uh, Google updated their search engine algorithm and it was uh, called the Penguin Update and that 
um, change the rules around um, a little bit. So a lot of people were, you know, were impacted, a lot of people um, kind of lost rankings through that. And, and uh, so what we did, we, um, uh, we took a look at, uh, you know, this this update and we uh, advised our article samurai customers about how to change the way that they're using article samurai in order to still get um, kind of good results so for those that are not 100 uh, percent aware like one of the big things in penguin that you have to be careful about is building too many targeted uh backlinks so backlinks that have your um too many keywords in them. So if you had like 80% of the, the the links coming to your website had your search engine phrase that you're trying to rank for in them, that that was just, you know, that's too much and you'll get penalized for doing that. So uh, um, so we now, um, we've, we've changed the guidelines. So we let, we're telling people to mix up the, the, the backlink spread. Um, so it's now more about ratios of stuff rather than just pure volume? Yeah, that's right. So the rules have changed around a little bit. So you need to kind of use it with a little bit of moderation mm -hmm. and a little bit, a little bit of sense. Um, the, the thing we did late towards the end of, uh, well, definitely la last year this time. Last year <laughs> was we, um, one of the great things, because we got thousands of people using um, Article Samurai, uh, we can work out, uh, uh, you know, we, we know what articles they've submitted, we know what keywords they kind of go for. So we just did an internal um, uh, research project, taking a look and see, you know, what, what are the strategies that uh, our customers are using that are working uh, currently in the marketplace. And we, we found that a lot of people were still getting quite good success, uh, quite a very large percentage of people that were using uh, Article Samurai were still getting our front page rankings. And the, uh, the other thing we found, which was a little bit surprising, I guess not that's surprising in hindsight was there's a ton of people in um, uh, using Article Samurai to rank YouTube videos, and anyone who's you know knows a little bit about SEO knows that you know YouTube SEO YouTube marketing is really really huge um, at the moment. It's a lot easier to get a YouTube video a lot of the times to rank than a piece of content you know uh, on a blog. So using Article Samurai to uh, just build, you, know, you don't need a lot of backlinks, maybe just you know, just one syndication uh, out with backlinks to a YouTube video, um, just gives that uh, YouTube video just a little bit of juice that gets it uh, ranking high on the, the search um, the, the search engine pages. So if you see a keyword phrase and it doesn't have any YouTube things ranking or there's only one or two, then there's still a lot of opportunities um, yeah, there to use Article Samurai uh, for your SEO. Well, YouTube videos, they're, they're kind of still low-hanging fruit with when it comes to SEO. I mean, Google are, Google are almost always going to give you one or two video results for, for pretty much any keyword. Yes. Um, so if you, if you do see a search term that doesn't have a couple of video results, almost certainly there's going to be a way that you're going to be able to get your video up the top of that one. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. So good news on the article summary. Yeah, so it's still it's it's working. It's working really great around videos. So yeah, still uh, still definitely a, a, a tool that's work, you know, working in today's environment. Yeah, excellent, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent. Well, this will be my favourite part of this segment, and it's we're talking about the future direction for Noble Samurai. Now we have a few products in the pipeworks. One of which is called Rank Tracker Samurai. Now, you would like to explain about Rank Tracker Samurai and what exactly it is? Yeah, so Rank Track. Um, um, as Alex sort of spoke a bit earlier, you know, Rank Tracker is our rank tracking service. Uh, but currently, it's it's only available to people who who use. Um, it's our friendly, our friendly gardener. <laughs> so I'm just kind of around watering plants. <laughs> Don't worry, we're just streaming live to the internet. No problems. <laughs> Try to discourage him. Fails. <laughs> yes. Um, so. Uh, Lost my train of thought there. So rank tracker, rank tracker. Rank tracker. You, currently, to use rank tracker, um, you need a copy of Market Samurai or a copy of Article Samurai. That's you need. That's one of the. That's the only way you can get access to that service. So rank tracker Samurai is is about decoupling rank tracker so people can use it as a standalone uh, service. So allowing yeah people to uh, download. You know, a piece of Rank Tracker Samurai software and access the service, but there's no need or requirement to own a copy of Market Samurai or um, or Article Samurai. It's going to be awesome. Sorry, can, can you not walk through that? That would be great. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody seems to want to do things today. Okay. Busy, busy in the office today. Episode one. We'll call it a pilot. Call it a pilot. This is this is not episode one. <laughs> episode one will be polished, slick. So Rank Track Samurai is another another thing that's coming up soon. It's going to be exciting for everybody. Yes, it is. Uh, okay, next next cap off the rank. Uh, we have a few more products. We haven't quite finished yet. Uh, email Samurai, Email Samurai, huge. What is it? Yeah. So um, a lot of the ideas for products that we 
and what we have at, Mark, uh, at Noble Samurai based on products that, that we've built internally that we, we really want that we can't find any good alternatives in the marketplace. So we, um, as most people know, we've got about 500,000 people you know, on our email database and we've been very, very successful in that, that area. Um, but we've really struggled to find a really, really good email order responder um, we sure have serv a service. And we used to use you know, Aweber and we have a whole lot of issues that I won't go into right now um, using that but there was just a whole bunch of things that we couldn't do uh, with Aweber and, uh, and, and any other, not just Aweber but just any other kind of service um, out there and particularly to do with yeah, specifically sales and marketing um, activities so we about eight nine months ago um, we rewrote we built an autoresponder service um, from scratch um, built it on WordPress and uh, and we've been using it for the last uh, you know, yeah, for the last eight months. So if you've been getting emails from us, it's yeah, they haven't been coming from a commercial email service. They've been coming from our own uh, email samurai. If you haven't um, been service. getting emails, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> How are you watching this? Um, <laughs> so. Uh, yep. Yeah, so that's been very, very successful. We've um, been talking to a lot of other marketers about so what we've been working on, and there's a lot of interest in it. So we're looking to uh, commercialize this email samurai uh, plugin and, and, and service. And uh, so, yes, yeah, stay, stay tuned. We're really excited about it. Um, in a nutshell, um, yeah, most autoresponder ser services out there um, are not really made for marketing. They don't like you marketing. In fact, your yeah, marketers are the you know the problem children of uh, of uh, email marketing because you know they. They often result in a lot of, you know, complaints and uh, deliverability, there, deliverability issues. Terms of service that say you cannot email Mailchimp. Yeah, like Mailchimp, for example, you cannot do any affiliate marketing if yep. you use Mailchimp. You might not know that if you subscribe to Mailchimp. So, um, and there's a lot of uh, things that we'd like to be able to do in um, in email marketing to improve response rate. But you know that most of the services out there are not really targeting. You know, direct marketers, they're targeting corporates or people doing newsletters and, and that kind of stuff. So we've really been neglected, I think, as a, as a customer base. And uh, so we hope to kind of fix those problems uh, with uh, Email Samurai. And that's a really nice side about Email Samurai. It's just it's a WordPress plugin. So anyone who's got a WordPress site and wants to use it for, uh, for the purposes of email marketing, they're able to just download, install, yeah. uh, install the plugin. Yeah, and we've we've been using it. Um, the current version, which is very basic, um, is you know, we've sent millions and millions and millions of emails. So the thing is really rock solid. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of other features we want to add into it and uh, pretty up the user interface. But yeah, it's a good example of uh, the fact that the products that we actually develop are ones that we want to use. We actually use what we market. So uh, we'd only ever put it out to market once we know it's good as gold and ready to go. So last but not least, huge. Have we chosen a name for this product yet? Or you know, we have. Indeed. Indeed. We have. have indeed. It's okay. up on the screen right now. That's okay because we have something different. Broadcast Samurai. Yeah, Broadcast Samurai. This is a perfect example of, um, yeah, of uh, yeah, product we want a to product use. we want to use because Absolutely. literally this product didn't exist eight days ago or nine <laughs> days ago. Um, and uh, we've been when we've done webinars in the past, we've used something like a, like a product called GoToWebinar, which is a fantastic product. Yeah, and it's solid. Uh, it's solid, but for us, we can only. It's got a couple of restrictions. One, you can only have a thousand people in the room, which probably sounds like that's a lot of people. Uh, but we've had situations where we've needed to have more than a thousand people. We've had seven thousand people register our webinars and only a thousand people in the room. So it's it's really not an, enough for us. Um, and uh, so we there's and the other thing too. It, was, it used to be available at a really great price. You could, for ninety nine dollars a month or ninety seven bucks a month, you could get access to a thousand, um, you know, a thousand room uh, webinar through go to webinar. But they changed their pricing. We didn't, we didn't, weren't even aware of this until recently, because uh, we got grandfathered in at the ninety seven dollar a month um, uh, deal. And uh, but now it's something like four or five hundred dollars a month to get access to that kind of level, uh, which is you know way beyond the the, the you know the means of, of most people and online business that's very very expensive particularly if you're not doing webinar every single week if you're only using it every now and then so um, a while ago Google released this amazing thing called Google Hangouts and this is we're streaming this live um, hopefully <laughs> with uh, through through Google Hangouts um, and Google Hangouts has a has a feature called 
Google Hangouts on Air, which allows you to not just talk to three or four people that you're hanging out with on Google Hangouts, which is a, it's like a peer video chat uh, system, but allow you to broadcast that using the very, very solid YouTube live uh, service. So you know, YouTube Live is built you know, essentially to take an unlimited number of people. They use YouTube Live for streaming huge concerts, for streaming the Royal Wedding was broadcast, I think even parts of the Olympics were broadcast through YouTube Live. I mean this thing is, is serious like yeah, serious serious stuff. Reasonable scalability then. Reasonable sc scalability, and so essentially gives you unlimited sc scaling. So it's really fantastic. So as as you know, as online marketers. Um, Webinars are a great way to, you know, to, to talk to your audience, um, as well as a good, great way to create content. And that's why we're doing this, is to obviously get more content out there and force us to produce you know, really great content and get that out. Um, so the, but the problem is, it's not really made for webinars. There's a whole bunch of webinar features that you can't really do very well through, through, um, through Google Hangouts on Air. Um, so we decided to build that. So we wrote a plugin called Broadcast Samurai, which allows you to um, get the live video stream from YouTube and put that inside your web page. So if you're viewing this live, you're actually using Broadcast. Cast Samurai, uh, we've, we've, and uh, beta uh, testers. Be, your beta testers. Uh, we've got uh, there's a little chat um, system uh, underneath this video as well, and that chat system again has been built to take a, essentially an unlimited number of people. So many, many thousands of people can be chatting uh, in in the live chat, um, and it. It, it solves problems. The fact, yeah, with Google Hangouts on air, it's very difficult to give people a an address to go to. Um, to Unless you start streaming hours ahead of the yeah, uh, you, the only, event. you only get the link to the, the live thing, yeah, the live stream when you start streaming. So it's kind of a chicken and the egg process. So if you're trying to get people to show up to a yeah, to a live webinar, you need um, you need an address. So by having a WordPress plugin, you can give people the address of the page on your site, um, and uh, then it will automatically detect when you start broadcasting and then it'll just all magically work and then have a whole bunch of other awesome um, you know webinar functionality down the track as well but yeah um, so that's potentially going to become a product if you're interested people I've mentioned it to um, really excited about it so um, yeah that that is broadcast samurai we've been very busy as you can tell so I hope you guys enjoyed this product roundup and you're as excited as we are for some of the stuff coming up. I'm going to exit the stage now and leave you in the capable hands of Alex and Huge for the next segment, Ask a Samurai. Doesn't seem to have the ability to go back twice. Okay, Ask Hello. a Samurai. What's Ask a Samurai about, Alex? Uh, well, Ask a Samurai is uh, our one and only opportunity for the week for uh, for our users to effectively ask this gentleman here, um, who is the Master Samurai, uh, a few questions about, uh, about internet marketing, about uh, SEO, about our products, about everything, really. Yeah. Um, just, and not just ask myself, ask anyone from our team, but I'll just be the standard here because I'm sitting Because you're the Master Samurai. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a reasonable, uh, reasonable one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we've been looking at questions that uh, have been submitted by our user base through support, through Twitter, through Facebook, etc. Um, looking for questions that people really want to know the answers to so that we can uh, try and answer some of them today. Awesome. Um, so we will uh, we'll kick off. Um, the first one is to do with social media. So I mean, social media, it's not that new, but uh, it's, a, it's a very, very rapidly changing environment. And a lot of people are, even though social media itself isn't new, a lot of people are coming into it still um, relatively fresh. So the question we've got today is, a lot of my competitors are using social media. What's a good way to start using social media? OK, well, um, I think social media is very, very important. And, um, and I think one of the questions you need to ask yourself is, what outcome are you trying to get from social media? Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't have a very strong idea of what you're trying to do, then you're likely just to hang out on Facebook and Twitter and waste a whole bunch of time and not really get a lot of a lot of really great business results. There's yep. a whole lot of reasons why you want to be on social media. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, well, Give a few of them. Yeah, like the, the, probably the number one thing is just so that your customers can actually talk to you. Okay. Like it's, it's just like it's just like an email address now. So people will want to talk to you, want to communicate through that channel, and you should be available in any venue that your customers are, um, are, are on. So that's kind of like, that's one of the, the, the minimum reasons to be there. But you don't need to be very active if that's if that's all you need to, to kind of do. Yeah. To set up a page or set up a Twitter profile and you know, you're, you're kind of there. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, as, as marketers, a lot of what we're trying to do uh, with social media is to 
get traffic, mm -hmm. right? Or to or to increase conversions, or to you know to warm up our traffic and build a relationship with people. Um, so there's a lot of really good reasons to to to, to use social media. Mm -hmm. um, and also with search engine optimization at the moment, there is certainly a, a huge bias towards um, social media uh, engagement. So a page that's been liked, a lot of people that have been shared around, what we don't, um, will we'll tend to rank even higher, higher in the search engines, for example, and people have shown this mathematically, this to be true. So there are, there are search engine benefits uh, for, for doing that as well, as well as just the ability to um, uh, get viral traffic if people like something. Obviously, sharing it with their friends, and, yep. and if if your customers are likely to know other customers that uh, might be interested in your product as well. So there are so there's a but so that's kind of some of the reasons why you might want um, want to use social media. Yep. Um, I think that I'll probably go through a couple of really basic examples of what people should be doing. I think the minimum thing that you should be doing, apart from obviously responding to customer inquiries and things through 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 so the, the social networks is um, uh, SEO certainly is becoming m more content marketing and I think anyone who's online needs to be putting really great content out. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's you know, content marketing is a big buzzword at the moment but um, it really hasn't changed. Really, content is king. Put out, putting out really great content is a, is, a, is, a, is a fantastic way to attract people to your, your visitors, uh, to, your web, to your website. Yep. Um, so at the very least, that any content that you kind of create, you know, you should share that through all the social media places. So, um, and there's lots of tools that out there that can help you do that. So I think that's kind of the minimum is, you know, using it to get stuff out. Yeah. Um, I think the next notch up from that is to start participating in the conversations in your community, in your niche, in your market. And there's two really good ways to do that. Um, one is to take a look at who are the big players in your marketplace follow them all. You might even add them to a Twitter list or something so that it's easier for you to, to follow them if it's on Twitter or, you know, uh, follow the, uh, build relationships with the people that are the market leaders. And then whenever they share some really great information, you know, sh share that to, you, to your followers. So yep. if, it's, if they're tweeting something, retweet that to, to your followers. I mean, be you know, curator. Don't just retweet every single thing that they tweet, right? But good stuff that's of interest, you know, retweet them because they'll see that, and then you'll start showing up on their radar too, which is a good, great way for you to build, um, you know, relationship with the movers and shakers in your industry. And obviously, you, you'd want to be able, you want to declare your sources. You want to just make it clear that you know, you've absolutely someone else. Yeah, I mean, then the name of the game these days is kind of is curation, really, and um, it's not even content creation. Um, so uh, the and and I guess another really great way is to find like what are the major really great uh, blogs and and websites in your industry that have a lot of news a lot of really great articles add them all to your feed reader mm -hmm. i was going to say google reader but it looks like that's no longer that, that's dying very very soon but uh, in, into your um your rss feed reader mm -hmm. Um, or into Flipboard, or you know whatever you're using, like there's or Zite, or there's a whole bunch of different uh, sort of social news platforms and things. Yep. Um, and when you see something really great, um, share that in social media. Um, and you can even use a tool such as Buffer. Yes, uh, yeah. That can add each of these. Um, uh, things that you're trying to share into a queue and then schedule that to go out to all your different social medias, um, you know, outlets at the at the, the right time. Yes. You know, because it's you're going to get different responses at different time zones. So it works out what, what the best time is for engagement with your particular um, customer base and, and gets it out there. So I think, you know, they are, some, they are some really practical ways of using social media that can have a real tangible business benefit. Cool. Um, all righty. Um, the next one, it's been the same question that's been coming up for <laughs> probably the last two years. Yeah. Um, doesn't really seem to change, but the answer does uh, the, the answer does change. Yes. Like we're learning a lot more. The next one is, with Google changing all the rules, what do you recommend now as a viable SEO strategy? Yeah, well, I think the, the important thing to realize is that Google's opinion has not changed. Like people say, oh, Google's changed everything. and But, you know, they, they, they publish a set of um, Google Webmaster Guidelines there have been little tweaks here and there, and they're more clarifications than anything else. But when they released Penguin and Panda, they were like, weren't they major changes to the webinar? Uh, not webinar, the webmaster tool or webmaster guidelines? No, not really. There were a couple of um, there were a couple of clarifications around, okay. around some of that sort of stuff, but the actual spirit of it did not change. And so, what Google has been saying has been. Um, 
uh, you know, permissible behavior and recommended, you know, behavior in, in, in search engine optimization really has not changed. What has changed, as you, as you, um, you know, pointed out, is that their implementation of actually enforcing those rules has changed. Okay, and and the biggest change is that in the past with search engine optimization, like essentially, the the more you strayed away from those guidelines, and the more that you know, like we're, we're aggressive, say with link building, and sort yeah. of got, went to the grey or black hat sort of areas of, of search engine optimization, um, the the word. The worst that would happen if if Google updated an algorithm was that any benefit that you were getting from that work that was you know a little sort of bit in the gray areas yeah. um, that you did would, would just disappear. You'd sort of just lose the benefit. So you'd probably lose rankings with that as well. It would feel but, like a penalty. Yeah, right? but then you could just yeah start again, do something yeah. else, or clean up and swear that you're never doing that dodgy SEO stuff again. I've never met a person who said <laughs> that they do do black hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, black hat people don't think that they do black hat. Um, so, um, but but now with the Penguin update, they, Google wouldn't ever really say this, but the, the realities are that if you have been you know caught with say getting these anchor text ratios out of you know uh, um, yeah too heavily optimized, too aggressively optimized, then you can essentially penalize that site, and for, and so oftentimes it can be um, uh, better just to start with a brand new site than trying to actually recover. You know, a so site, the penalty so, applies to the site itself. Yes, if you get the wrong the wrong mix of backlinks and things, and this this has been the case with Panda as well, with yeah. you know large amounts of duplicate content. Um, that's actually the, probably the biggest change. But Penguin, yes, even with the backlink ratios, um, it, 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 you can actually ha have a penalty, and that's that's the game changer. The game changer is we're moving from a, 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 to a position of penalties. Yep, um, and. So that you know, that that being in mind, we've already we've got some we've actually released a, a great webinar about how to kind of look how to recover from these penalties and, and what to do. But put together a tool for actually looking at um, yes. how your how your backlinks are structured. We've got a um, the uh, backlink health check tool that we've created to help people to me to measure this stuff and work out how you know close the line people are in terms of crossing over these these, these rules. Um, but in terms of viable SEO strategy to answer the question. The, I think SEO is just becoming more marketing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, to just do more marketing, what does that mean? And I think the, the, the word to Google, look up, is content marketing. Yeah. And, and this is, um, and this is you know, the creation of really great content around your product and service kind of areas um, to create a connection with your, with your readers, to, to create inbound um, uh, traffic, um, to allow people to create engaging content that people can, can, can share and interact um, and essentially pre-sell your brand to, product, yeah, to your customer base through, through, um, yeah, through content. Yep. So I'll give you a really good example of this. I've got, I met someone at a conference uh, last weekend and he does SEO for a very, very large insurance firm. Mm -hmm. And they, when selling car insurance, for example, most people when they buy car insurance, they just keep renewing their policy. They don't look around to save a bit more money, you know, um, uh, each, each, change. Each, each, each time, yeah, the, their, their policy comes up for renewal. So really the battle is fought in car insurance on the first the first time car buyer who mm -hmm. wants to insure their car for the very first time. Yeah. So this person who is a professional SEO actually helps them create content targeting the first car buyer. So they create a bunch of content about how to buy your first car, 10 steps to um, to look out for when buying your first car and produce you know, free reports and a whole bunch of really great content out there um, targeting that market. It doesn't even really talk about insurance or insurance might be one of the points. Yes. On on, on that kind of checklist, but it's branded with them and it, you know, it introduced them to, to that brand. So when that person does get around to buying their car um, and purchasing insurance, um, you know, hopefully they will be more likely to purchase insurance from them than rather than one of their competitors, particularly if they've created some great content. Um, and then they can link to you know, link to their website to get like the full you know twenty two steps to buying a new car yep. uh, report, and that creates you know relationship that can send emails out to them, um, offer them an offer. You know, hey, if you if you take out insurance in the next thirty days, then hey, we'll give you you know twenty percent off your premium or, or whatever it is. So, so basically by putting out a whole bunch of content, um, it's a really good way to to, 
attract people into your brand. So that's what content marketing is. It's creating... It kind of works on the principle you mentioned earlier of reciprocity. You're giving people something. You're giving. You're putting something out there in the market. Yes. And so the, you know, the general feel is that they should then you know, give you something back. And at the very least, you know, even if it, you know, people don't feel, oh, you gave me this free report, I owe you something, at the very least it... it, it you know, it's more positive. It, it's, it's, it gives people trust. It creates yeah. trust, right? And it and and people and that whole liking thing we talked about earlier. Uh, people are more likely to do business with someone that they know than, than someone that they don't know. Absolutely. And this makes you moves you into the no zone as apart from the, the you know the friend zone as apart from the stranger zone. So yep. So yep. that's um, that's kind of content marketing. Definitely, you know, um, you know, Google this stuff. Look at it. But I really think that um, getting a great content strategy is a very very important part now of uh, search and optimization probably always has been but um, now it's kind of one of the main other, other avenues have been closed off yes yes i mean there still are some loopholes out there so we talked about video marketing yep. um, earlier video is still relatively easy to get rankings for but all those kind of loopholes and low-hanging fruit they all they will all disappear with time yes. if it's easy it'll stop working okay that's seo so just put out you know do timeless stuff do white hat stuff put lots of great content out there and you'll stand the test of time hopefully uh, alrighty so the next question we've got um, relates to just traffic getting traffic through different sources um, so you know there's ways of getting organic traffic there's ways of getting traffic just directly from search engines etc mm -hmm. but there's also paid traffic um, and one of the questions we get asked quite frequently um, comes in a form roughly like, I've spent hundreds of dollars on paid traffic through AdWords and Facebook, it's a search source here, um, but I can't make that, traf um, that traffic pro uh, profitable. Um, what would you recommend? Okay, well I think there's a, there's a few things. The first thing, and I know people probably won't do it, but um, you know, there's this thing called market research. <laughs> and uh, you know, the, we have a product in that field. We have products in called, called Market Samurai. But yeah, I think it's really important that before you even create a product or look at building a business around a product, that you do your market research most of the time. Most of the time. Okay, most of the time. When people that get uh, they, they can't sell something, it's because they're selling in a bad market. They, they're not. They're not, um, or they don't know how people are selling in the, in that particular market. So do your research. Find those keywords which have you know which show commerciality and traffic mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But go beyond that as well. So once you've identified that yes, there are people spending money, don't stop there. Okay, look at how people are making money. Okay, so people are using a particular sales sequence. Like they, in some markets, you will lose money up front in, in yeah. pay per click, but there's a really nice back end, like a, a recurring income stream, for example. Um, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, so like uh, beauty products where you might, you know, get a new tub of this beauty product every month or something. They're happy to give the first one away for free or, or lose money in the first one because people are going into a subscription yeah. and there's a lot of money to be made in that subscription. So you need to understand how people are selling in that marketplace, the study, the ads they're using, the appeals that they're using, you know, just the actual sales process. Are they squeezing people? You know, uh, what's the autoresponder sequence that they're using? What are the benefits that they're, they're using? So study 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 the competition once you you think you have an idea okay then I, um, I really think what you should do is you should find an affiliate product that is of a, you know, similar to what other people are selling like and it's similar to what you'd also like to sell and similar to what you'd like to sell and you should try to sell it drive pay traffic this is not this is not about making money at all okay this is about testing traffic so take test sending traffic to an affiliate product or um, and, and, and try to create that, that sales process as, as much as possible so you have an actual tangible number about you know, how much it's going to cost to advertise plus what your actual conversion rate the things are going to be. Yep. Now once you've got that you can go and crunch the numbers and say well hey look if I was if I got all the money I wasn't just getting an affiliate commission would it be profitable or not? Yep. Right so that so you should do that kind of testing just again no one really does this at all unfortunately um, but and but if you're using paid traffic I think that's really really important to do. Okay. Um, and then um, and then and only then you know, when you can kind of make the numbers work or have enough confidence you can make the numbers work then you might look at building a product you know to to um, you know, service that marketplace. Unfortunately most people that ask this question have you know the, the ship has sailed on that one they've already spent a lot of time and money building a product they already have a product or they had products before they got you know got online so yeah so the question then is how do you um, make that, uh, that that traffic profitable and I think there's a couple of ways the two biggest mistakes I see um, are 
Number one, not being targeted enough with your traffic. Oh, I've seen that one. Most people just throw thousands of keywords. You can't, not that you can do that anymore, but you know they they would they try just to buy as much traffic as they can, hoping that some of it will stick. If you do that, you're just gonna you're gonna fail. Well, we had a, a case of uh, maybe a year ago. We we did a launch and we uh, we had a huge amount of traffic come through, and we traced it, and something like ninety percent of it came from <laughs> uh, from a single person who'd paid for clicks, and they earned zero commissions. Well, not paid. They, 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 not, it's nothing wrong with paying for clicks, but they went through a service called AdFly, which is essentially exit traffic. Um, so, imagine, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, it was just it was like the worst, most untargeted traffic you could imagine. Literally, they they almost crashed our service, um, and they sent tens of thousands of, of views and not a single sale. So. AdWords or, or Facebook, it's the same kind of thing. People can just try to get greedy and try to buy more and more traffic when you, you want, at least when you're starting, okay? At least when you're starting, when you're trying to get this thing profitable, trying to get it off the ground, you want to buy the most targeted traffic as possible. And if you can't sell that traffic, then you have a problem. Yes. Okay, you need to really take a look at your, your, your business model. Um, the second, uh, uh, yep, so, so target traffic is really, really important. Um, and the other mistake that I see people making um, is they're just trying to sell something too cheap. So just the way that the math works, okay, is uh, not a high enough profit. Robert. You need to be, yeah, like you're not going to make money selling a twenty dollar ebook, particularly if the click to get you there costs you know, a couple yeah. of dollars in of itself. So the, yeah, that's the way the math works. So if say if you have a one percent conversion right, you're selling so you're selling a you're selling a twenty dollar mm -hmm. ebook, then the numbers mean that you need at a 1% conversion rate, you can only afford to pay up to 20 cents per click to break even. Yes. So you need to be paying less than 20% or 20 cents per click to make money. And obviously, if anyone has any PPC knows 20 cents a click, gee, that's cheap. You yes. Know? Yep. So you need, to, you really need to be looking at um, more expensive uh, to sell, provide more value in your product so you can charge more money for them, or have a add a back end component to it. But back ends are really hard to just. I wouldn't. I would say make money in your front end. Don't even look at your back end initially because um, you know if you're struggling to sell stuff, you're not going to have enough people go through your back end yep. to work out what the average um, value per, per sale or per lead is going to be. So make money on your front end. Um, and yeah, uh, so I think that they're, they're probably two really great tips. And just become awesome at copywriting. Like do lots of ads, study study lots of ads. We've got a copywriting segment, the conversion factor. Get lots of books about copywriting. Become become an expert at sales and marketing, and you'll be able to reap the benefits across all aspects of your life and specifically your business. One thing, one thing you mentioned there, you just touched on at the end, is there are companies out there that are obviously very successful at using their ads. So look at the ads that they use. Yeah. I mean, they are they are succeeding and the combination of words and things that they're using are successful ones so you can learn a lot from that yeah and there's the services like spyfu.com that you can go and you can take a look at you can type in your competitors and see what keywords are advertising you can yep. see what ads they're running um i think SEM rush has a similar kind of fu functionality that's free so you can get a lot of yeah, a lot of the the data up front don't get you know stuck in analysis paralysis and that's what i said if you just you know find something Thing, pay some tra buy some traffic and do some testing, but um, yeah, study the competition. Yep. Um, so next up, if you've done if you've done a lot of Google searching, which pretty much everyone has, you'll note that there are certain types of sites that uh, that always seem to hit the top uh, top couple of positions um, for a lot of searches, um, and those sites can be particularly difficult to displace. So the question for this one is, sites like Wikipedia and Amazon are ranking in position one for keywords that I'm targeting. How can I compete with them? Well, I think Wikipedia, for example, I read some studies to say that they show on the front page or number one for something like 60 or 70% of all searches, all searches. There's a very good reason for it though. Yeah, right. And so it's very, very, very hard to compete with Wikipedia. Um, they have, they have a massive amount of authority, a, whole, a massive amount of trust, uh, but they also deserve to be there. The content is actually the good content stuff. is fantastic. Like I, well, there's very few sites I'll actually go directly to. There's obviously Google and Wikipedia. I'll often just pull, pull up Wikipedia and search, and a lot of people are like that. Even if they search in Google, I'll type in Wiki, or, you know, Wikipedia, yeah. you know, and, um, and 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 a search term to try and find that. It's just awesome, right? So, and and there's there's less than that is that whatever. 
page that you're tr creating to try to rank for something, it needs to be awesome. It needs to be better than Wikipedia. And that's a very, very hard thing. And that's to a hard that. thing to do, right? So, uh, so, it, so just, you know, that is an actual principle. So I wouldn't be trying to out outrank my Wikipedia. It is possible. I've seen examples of people do that. So it's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult. But I would definitely be saying, if you're going into it with an SEO kind of mindset that you still, you know, just, if you only can come in and rank at position number three, then you crunch the numbers and make sure it's still worth the effort to go in and rank at number number three. So um, Amazon is a little easier yeah. because uh, they're a commercial site. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Google will tend to try to rank the actual brand site higher than websites that are selling their, their brand. So Apple should rank higher in a search relating to Apple than an Amazon site. Absolutely. It, yeah, exactly. You won't see. You won't. You'll see seven or eight of, of, on the front page will be Apple sites. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think the and, and I think the the other important thing is that the most dangerous um, number in business, they say, is number one. So if you're completely trying to build your business on search engine optimization traffic, then you're doing something wrong. You know, you really need to diversify um, your traffic source. SEO. Um, in the past has been something that you could really get very, very quick rankings. Mm -hmm. It's still possible in some circumstances, but it really is more, it's more a long-term game now. It's about content marketing and building up trust and authority over time. Um, and that's always been going that way. So, you know, if you need to be looking at mixing it up, we get, you know, Noble Samurai gets 40% of its traffic from affiliates. Yeah. That's great. You know, we we do pay for that traffic. We just pay on the sale. We sale. We don't pay for, for the lead. Um, and uh, we buy traffic on ad. You know, in uh, and AdWords and, and Facebook as well. So you need to be looking at multiple streams of traffic to your website, not just targeting SEO. Cool. Um, all righty. Um, Next up, we have uh, have one. We, we kind of covered, covered a little bit of it earlier, but um, uh, you've spoken a lot about content marketing, and people are always talking about content marketing being the new SEO, and I actually want to know what that means. Okay, so I think we've kind of covered most of it sort of already, um, but yeah, essentially is you know, to, in the past, SEO was really all about doing some on-page optimization and then just building a bunch of backlinks. Now, Backlinks definitely still part of the mix. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important, but it's not volume of, of, of back, backlinks. It's still, it's not even just the, the authority, the quality of the backlink. There's, a, it is about user engagement fundamentally. Google measures every single click that goes through to your site. If someone clicks through and then they bounce, they come back straight away. Then that's a vote that hey, this you know this is a really bad website. So similarly, people don't click your result in the search engines. That's that's a that's that's a sign. Um, now, with every you know, practically every site which has uh, Facebook likes and tweets and things, if there is no no social activity around a particular site, then that that's potentially um, a negative thing, or certainly it's a positive thing if you can get people engaged with your content, people sharing it. Yeah. Then that's 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 a that's a positive vote of of confidence for your for your content content. So that's what content marketing is about. It is producing great content that people love, that people want to share, that has r real value, um, and that is actually being factored into the search engine algorithms. Okay. As well as, um, uh, you know, the, the better the content is, the more people will share, the more people will will link to it um, in, inherently. Um, so yeah, that that's that's why. What people should be doing. I suppose if you've seen anything, you know, like YouTube videos going viral, there is no way that you can compete with that as a, a you know, as a form of getting a message out there. Absolutely. If something gets out there on social media or a, a format like that, that, there's nothing that compares. Yeah. So there's kind of two types of marketing. One is outbound marketing, where you know, where which is traditional stuff, you know, just traditional advertisers and you know, running ads on people's sites, you know, trying to encourage them to come to your site. Um, um, and but but inbound marketing is creating you know a whole bunch of really really great you know content that people want to share that will eventually lead them to come to, to you know to, to your site. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subtle change in in the way that 
stuff happens, but um, it really can, it, the, the seed of that is about content, which means that you, you need, need to be looking at your content creation process and how can you be efficient in creating content. What we're doing here with this, this, this podcast is doing that, it's doing content marketing. By recording this video, we can chop up each of the different segments we can syndicate that, we can transcribe it, we can create blog posts uh, from that, we can create audio uh, f for that and just capture it once and then reuse it and syndicate it out to where the audience is in the social networks, in you know the, the, yeah, the, the different video syndication sites. So um, yeah, that is, we're doing content marketing ourselves. So again, we're practicing what we preach. Um, so, but it, but it's about leverage and systems and, and, and video is a very efficient way to capture something because you can easily then turn it into audio and text and uh, if anyone, anyone's checked out the Profit Hacks product, I think we promoted it a few months ago, then they, they spell this all out for you and it's a very, very powerful process. Cool. Um, all right, so we've got time for, uh, for one last question. Um, and this one is quite close to our hearts. Uh, the, the question is, I'm about to build my new, uh, my new site. Should I use WordPress? What are the advantages? And the reason this is close to our hearts, we've actually just done a major push. We've put, um, changed all our sites to, uh, to use WordPress. Um, it was quite a major change, but it was driven by an internal pain. So um, yeah, talk us, through, talk us through WordPress. Yeah, uh, well, I think the answer is yes. I think anyone who's building a site, um, for the most part, should be looking at trying to build that site upon WordPress. Mm -hmm. Um, and the ma there's a bunch of reasons for that. Uh, the major reason is that there, it, it's really, it is really popular. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge ecosystem built around WordPress. There, are, it's easy to find WordPress developers. It's easy to find WordPress plugins to help you do things on your website. Um, as a marketer, there is an entire community of people building marketing plugins for WordPress. If you try to build your website on another platform, then you are missing out on that. You know, um, you've got a lot of work from scratch where you, you to, wouldn't have to. You have to custom code everything, or wait, you know, wait to till you know um, a plugin gets popular enough that they might look at another platform. But that rarely happens. Um, and also hosting, um, there are a lot of people that know how to um, host uh, WordPress, and so that you can scale and get millions and millions of people uh, to your website. So a lot of the hard problems are solved. So by being part of that ecosystem, um, you get to leverage all that. Um, the, I mean, the other reason is that it's, you know, it's relatively easy to use in mm -hmm. terms of it. And usually you don't have to be super technical if you want to write content. Um, it's easy to, to do so. Again, by plugging into the, the ecosystem, there's a lot of apps on mobile devices allow you to publish to WordPress and manage your comments on WordPress. And it's just anything that you can possibly think to be able to do with your website, you can probably find a plugin, just type in, you know, WordPress plugin and whatever it is that you're trying to find and yep. something will come up. Um, Nine times out of ten, it'll be a free thing too. Yeah, and it's free stuff and, um, you know, probably more importantly, there's also a lot of, um, you know, paid plugins because a lot of free stuff, it, you know, uh, doesn't get updated, doesn't get supported. And That's so, true. you know, I think it's different if you're just running a personal blog or if you're running a business and you depend on a plugin kind of working and you know every version of WordPress something breaks you know you really want to make sure that you get that that support so there's a lot of great free stuff out there we use a bunch of great great, great free stuff and some of it's well supported and a lot of it just languishes and doesn't do anything that's that's the the, the blessing and the curse of, of open, open source, um, source, source software so I think it's good to have that mix and I think WordPress has that healthy mix of both free both paid and all, and all the problems are solved yep so um, and it has a fantastic community around around it as well. So Absolutely. If, if you are stuck, there's these forums and there's you, pretty much every city, there is a user group. You don't even know it. There's a user group that meets up for free or every single month in your city right now, even if it's a little tiny one, um, and they get together and talk about WordPress stuff. So even if you're not technical, you can learn from other people that are using it. So that's a long way of saying yes. And it was that technical um, technical aspect that actually made us change all our sites to use WordPress. Um, previously, Whenever we wanted to do an upgrade, an update of uh, a piece of marketing material on the site, it required the marketing team to write it and format it, and they give it to the developers and they push it up onto the site. Then you've got the the kind of the testing cycle of does this look right? No, we want to tweak this here and this there. And you know, you're looking at uh, taking hours out of two people's days to make a change of a paragraph or two. Yeah, exactly. So putting the power back in the user for the mark, for particularly for the marketing stuff, and just, you know, just use your web developer for stuff you need to use your web developer for, but updating content nine times out of 10, you really should, shouldn't be one of them. You shouldn't be one of them. 
Um, all right, so that's all the questions for Ask a Samurai today. Uh, our samurai is looking quite tired. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I will leave you with, uh, with Eugene. Um, he'd like to have a, a few closing words. Okay. You can put that slide up better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... <clears throat> This is our very first episode. Obviously, there's still a few, a few rough edges around our production, and um, uh, but we we really want to do this on a regular basis, maybe weekly or fortnightly. Um, but we really want to get your feedback. Um, so if there's some stuff that you'd really really enjoyed, um, please let us know. If there's some things that you would like to um, uh, like like to know, some topics that you'd like us to cover please send us some feedback. So if you take a look at the, um, the slide that I'm about to put up, <clears throat> um, th there's a number of ways to get in contact with us. So there's our Facebook page, our Noble Samurai Facebook page. There's our uh, at Noble Samurai um, address on Twitter. And email. Email is re you know, generally actually probably the best way of getting through to us. It just goes into our ticket system and, and it'll, get, it'll get handled. So if you have any ideas uh, for or problems that you want us to talk about, uh, as well as we talked about earlier. Uh, if you have a website you'd like us to review, um, then pl please shoot that through with all the <coughs> excuse me with all the uh, relevant details. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed episode one, and uh, yeah, we'll let everyone know um, through uh, through probably our social networks, and uh, we might shoot out an email about when our next episode is happening. This is broadcast live, so you can follow along um, uh, using the Google Hangouts, uh, using the Broadcast Samurai um, page on our website. Uh, we'll be shooting you through links for that, and uh, you can follow along in the chat. And we'll also be taking this and um, some of the screen sharing stuff that we did today. It might not be so easy to see um, through the live stream, but we will be saving uh, the high quality version, um, you know, to our local hard drives and uploading that to uh, to YouTube and getting that out for people um, so they can see that all in high definition video. So that wraps up episode one of Way of the Samurai. Um, please let us know your thoughts.